Hello, I'm so glad you have found this video, a video that was recorded in one of our Zoom services in North Bushy, but unfortunately the introduction wasn't captured. So I just wanted to bring an introduction to what you are about to see. Katie is someone who has experienced the power of God in her life and in her family's life. And so we're just about to hear some of her testimonies before the rest of the message will continue as it was recorded. This, this whole message is one that shows that Jesus is alive but more than that, Jesus is alive in us. And this is something that we see in this testimony and we see throughout the Bible. Jesus is alive in his people. And as we hear this message, let me pray for you. Father God, we thank you that you raised Jesus back to life again to prove that what he did on the cross was enough for us. And also to give us the power to be able to live a life forever and a life that you want from us. So Holy Spirit, as we hear your words now, would you speak to us, guide us, shape us and empower us to be the people that you want us to be. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. I thought I'd share three encouraging stories of where God has shown his faithfulness. I asked my mum and dad for their input and one of the stories is quiet. When I was little, I lived in Germany because my father was in the army. Um, we were based in Mulheim near Düsseldorf. And my mum told me that she remembers taking my sister and I shopping and parking in a multi-storey car park. We used to call it the Dark Tower Jail because it was always badly lit and a little bit scary. It was also where a lot of people used to take drugs. My mum remembers getting us both out of the car, we must have been about five or six, and making her way towards the ticket machine with her purse in her hand. Suddenly a man started to walk quickly towards us and my mum just knew that he was going to try and snatch her purse. She prayed a quick arrow prayer and out of nowhere this big, good-looking, well-built guy appeared, making the other man turn around and walk away. And when she turned round, this good guy had vanished and was nowhere to be seen at all. I'm sure that this was an angel sent in response to my mum's prayer of protection. In Psalm 91, verse 11 says, He shall give his angels charge over you to keep you in all your ways. So that was one from my mum, and this one's from my dad. He shared a story of when he and my mum went white water rafting on a holiday in Turkey a few years ago. At the end of the run, their guide, and the only one who knew what, what he was doing, suggested that those who were up for it could slide overboard and float for the remaining 100 metres or so down the river. He said, you'll feel three slaps of water in your face. The current was quite strong. Um, the three slaps of water turned out to be a wall of water, and he soon found himself unable to breathe without taking on board lots of water. He remembered saying to himself, is this it, Lord? Then immediately he heard a voice say, not an audible voice, but an inner voice say, turn around, which he did. And so then he was floating downstream backwards, the water hitting the back of his head, and he could take some deep breaths and breathe. Psalm 120, verse 1 says, In my distress I cried out to the Lord, and he heard me. How amazing and comforting to know that we can have a God that really listens to us and this instant communication and assurance from him that he listens to us when we pray. And finally, I just want to share briefly something that um, demonstrates God's power today over the seen and the unseen. And one wonderful example of this is after praying over my boy, um, who for no reason at all would simply hit, kick, um, or painfully bump into, into us. Um, it wouldn't really be anyone outside of the family, um, and there'd be no rhyme or reason as to why it happened, and it, it was really quite distressing. Um, it certainly couldn't have been any copy behaviour in the home. And it used to make me tense up every time it came close, so I was trying to negate the impact of, of, um, of the force. Um, and this it just really wasn't in line with our gentle little boy. Um, so after praying and, and seeking God's wisdom, we prayed a short special prayer to free him from this thing that was causing this destructive behaviour. And we know it wasn't a natural thing because the force behind it was much more than a good boy was capable of. Anyway, 
Almost immediately, the pitting, the kicking and the violent behaviour stopped. So much so that it's now really hard to remember how it was. It's an amazing witness to how the Lord is able to set us free from things that oppress us and cause harm. God has power and authority over the things both seen and unseen, and I'm so grateful for what he, he will, um, I'm so grateful for everything he's done. And every day I thank God for what he has done in our kids' lives, what he is doing right now, and what he will do in the future. Um, because sometimes in situations like this, it isn't always an immediate turnaround like that, but more a gradual thing. Um, and I've had many experiences where after prayer, the change is slow, but there has been a change. And I've learned that it's really important to put that stake down in the ground after prayer, not to get discouraged, but to have faith. Because when you look back, you can see the steps forward. And, um, and then one day, you'll realise it's gone, whatever it was that was restricting um, growth. And we can pray with confidence and the authority given to us by Jesus' resurrection power. There is nothing he cannot fix. And he loves to set us free. <laughs> it says this, but God raised him from the dead, freeing him from the agony of death, because it was impossible for death to keep its hold on him. David said about him, I saw the Lord always before me, because he is at my right hand. I will not be shaken. Therefore, my heart is glad and my tongue rejoices. My body also will rest in hope because you will not abandon me to the realm of the dead. You will not let your Holy One see decay. You have made known to me the paths of life. You will fill me with joy in your presence. Fellow Israelites, I can tell you confidently that the patriarch David died and was buried, and his tomb is here to this day. But he was a prophet and knew that God had promised him on oath that he would place one of his descendants on his throne. Seeing what was to come, he spoke of the resurrection of the Messiah, that he was not abandoned to the realm of the dead, nor did his body see decay. God has raised this Jesus to life, and we are all witnesses of it. Exalted to the right hand of God, he has received from the Father the promised Holy Spirit, and has poured out what you now see and hear. For David did not ascend to heaven, and yet he said, The Lord said to my Lord, sit at my right hand, until I make your enemies a footstool for your feet. Therefore, let all Israel be assured of this. God has made this Jesus, whom you crucified, both Lord and Christ. This is the message of Pentecost, that Jesus is alive, and he is alive in us. He is alive in Peter, and Peter explains this. This is his sermon, in, I guess, in an abridged form of what Peter saw the resurrection meant for him and what it means for us and how the Holy Spirit has been poured out on his people because Jesus is alive and he has gone back into heaven. And I just want to look very briefly at, at two points about what this means for us and what, it, what does it mean that Jesus is alive in us. And the first thing that I see it means, and we see this right at the end in verse 36, that Jesus is king. Jesus is king. He is Lord of all. He is both Lord and Christ. And when we see these words, Lord, we, we realize that Lord is that it means that Jesus is Lord and nobody else is. Many people in this time in the Roman Empire would have been saying that Caesar is Lord. In other words, that he is above all. He is emperor. There is no one who can come close to him. And yet the radical thing that the disciples said that even meant that they went to death, they lost their life because of it, it was because they were saying that Jesus is Lord, no one else is. And they also say that Jesus is the Christ. He is the chosen one. He is the one who would save the world. So he is both saviour and Lord. And in, apart from Jesus, there is no salvation. We cannot be saved. He is the only way. He is the only truth. He is the only life. No one can come to the Father except through Jesus. No one can save us from our sins. No one could pay the price for our sins except for Jesus. No one could work their way back into God's good books. All have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. But in Jesus, there is salvation. In Jesus, there is redemption. In Jesus, we can be saved. 
he is king. And when he becomes our saviour, when we choose to accept him as our saviour, it cannot just stop there. He has to become Lord of our lives. It is not as simple as just saying, he's my saviour, right, I'm going to crack on with my life. For him to be our saviour, we must give him everything. And so he must be king of our lives. Think about the military kind of scenario, uh, uh, an army going into battle. When you are in the military, you have to obey orders because those orders are there to protect you. And you don't know why they are there sometimes, but you follow them because ultimately the highest power in the army says that's what you should do. And ultimately, in, certainly in ancient times, even in this country to an extent, it would be the king or, or the queen who would have that ultimate power. And that if you are in the army, you must be prepared to die for that cause. That is what it's like when we follow Jesus, that we must die to ourselves to follow this cause. And of course, when we die to ourselves, that doesn't just mean that um, we're saying, oh, we're following you and we don't know where we're going. We die to ourselves because Jesus has already died for us. He's already paid the price. He's already made a way for us to go into him. He is the king who came down to the earth to die on the cross as we looked at last week. And when he died on the cross, he showed us the way. The way for us to live is actually to die to ourselves. We must let go of what we think needs to happen and allow Jesus to be Lord of our lives, Jesus to be king, Jesus to be our savior. It is all about Jesus. And when Jesus says in Luke 9 that we must take up, deny ourselves, and take up our cross daily it's a daily prayer to say jesus be lord of my life even if i have to suffer for you even if i have to die for you i'm going to do it because i want you to be lord and i want you to be king and you must be my everything you see jesus always was king jesus didn't just become king when he raised when he came back to life jesus was always king but now he is in reality what he always was by right. He is now sitting on the throne as king of heaven. And in Revelation 1, we see John meet Jesus. And Jesus has eyes like fire and hair like wool. And he has a face that shines like the sun. He is glorious in his majesty. There is no one like him. He is seated on the throne far above all rule and authority and power and dominion. He is Lord of all. And one day every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. He must be Lord and everyone will one day realise it. And the question before each of us is, will we recognise that today? Many of us have already given our lives to Jesus and we bow the knee and recognise that he is Lord. One day the whole of creation will. Every single person. And the question of life is, the, the, the heart of life is, will we choose to bow that knee today and guarantee that we are part of his plan, we are part of his family, knowing that he is Lord of all. And the truth is, because he died for us, it makes it worthwhile us dying to him. In Colossians chapter 3, we read this. This is the truth for each one of us who has accepted Jesus Christ as Lord. Since then, you have been raised with Christ. Set your, heart on, your hearts on things above, where Christ is, seated at the right hand of God. Set your minds on things above, not on earthly things. For you died, and your life is now hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, who is your life, appears, then you also will appear with him in glory. You see, when we die to ourselves and we stop living selfishly for our own desires, our own ends, and when we choose to live for Jesus, we do die to ourselves. But it is completely worth it because we see that we also will appear with Christ in glory when he comes again. It is worth it because he is Lord. And when we choose to allow him to be Lord, we know that every battle is won, that our sins have been, have been forgiven. We have been set free. We can live a life with him and our life has died with him. And now we live this new life, the life of resurrection power and the one that means that he is king of our lives. And it is worth it because when we die to ourselves, as, as Jesus says in, 
in John chapter 12, that when we die, it's like a, a kernel of wheat falling into the ground. It must die. But as a result, many seeds come from it, many fruits. And this passage was also talking about Jesus. Because he died, many of us, all of us who have given our lives to Jesus, can come back and live a life for him, the life for which we were created. But also it's true for us, when we die to ourselves, we can produce the fruit that God wants from us. And we can live a life that is glorious, that is hopeful, that is full of joy and full of peace. Do we recognise that Jesus, King of our lives? Do we recognise that he must be Lord? Are we living for him every day, every moment? Are we saying, Jesus, be Lord of this situation? This week, most of you know that I have been in Rotherham. I've been on a mission there with a church called Liberty Church, and we've been out on the streets telling people about Jesus. I've had a wonderful time. I've had the privilege of leading 12 people to give their lives to Jesus. I've had the privilege of seeing um, some wonderful things happen. And I'll, I'll tell you some more later, but I, I can't do it all now in this message. But every time I stepped out and uh, shared someone with someone the good news of Jesus, I, I had to die to myself. The, the thing within me wanted to stay inside in the warm. It was, it was cold um, up in Rotherham. I wanted to stay in the warm. I wanted to move away from those people. I wanted to stay on my own. It would have been much easier. I'd, the, the fleshly part of me, my own body said, I don't want to do this. And every time I stepped on to, to share the gospel, I had to die to myself and be obedient to what God had called me to do and follow him to allow him to be king of my life. Every time. And that's the call on each of us. We recognise that he must be king of everything in our lives, every situation everything that we do and when we do we know that it's worth it because he is a good god who has already paid the price for us set us free and jesus is alive in us so he is king and he is also our help in verse 33 it says this of acts chapter 2 jesus is exalted to the right hand of god he has received from the Father the promised Holy Spirit and has poured out what you now see and hear. This is what Peter is saying is happening on the day of Pentecost, that Jesus has ascended back into heaven. He is now declared to be king over the whole of the universe. And because of that, he now sends the Holy Spirit on his church. And he is the power for which they can live and to live a life for Jesus. He is the help. He is the comfort. He is the advocate. He is the one who leads them into all truth and enables them to live the life for Christ. And that wasn't just true on the day of Pentecost. That is also true now. And it wouldn't have happened had Jesus not ascended up to heaven to be king, to be ruler of all, to be Lord of all. He then has the power to send the Holy Spirit and to give us authority to extend his reign and to extend his kingdom in this world and to see his kingdom come. And you see, Jesus on the cross has reversed the, the curse. He has reversed the, the effects of sin and the consequences of sin. In Genesis 11, we see that man is trying to build this tower, tower to declare the glory of man. Look how powerful mankind is. We can build this tower that reaches to the heavens. It is magnificent. It is beautiful. Who needs God? That's the heart of each one of us before we give our lives to Jesus. Who needs God? I'm going to build a tower in my life for my own sake, for my own glory, for me. And Jesus on the cross reverses that. And many of us know the story of the Tower of Babel. God comes down and confuses them by giving them lots of different languages so they can no longer communicate together. And what happens on the day of Pentecost? Because of Jesus' resurrection power in them, that curse is reversed, it's turned round, and they can now live a life where they can understand different languages. There, are, uh, there, are, there is communication there that is able to be able to understand the things of God, even though they don't understand what they're actually saying. God is alive in them. They are able to speak in tongues. 
the truth of who he is. This is the resurrection power that is available to us. He is our help. And we have that power in us, the same power that raised Christ Jesus from the dead, available to us so that we can do the works that even Jesus did. We can see the sick healed. We can see the, the bound up and the chained delivered. And we can see his glory on the earth. Do we believe in this power? Do we live in this power? Because Jesus is king. As I said this week, I've had the privilege of being able to lead uh, many people to Jesus and many other seeds have been sown. And actually, I know of at least 50 other people who have given their lives to Jesus this week uh, through some of the other guys who are there with me. But one of the stories that just brings joy to my heart in fact, I get quite emotional telling about it. It was this guy that I met. It was late on Friday and I had one more flyer to give out. And I was tired. I wanted to go inside. But I just said, Lord, I've got one more flyer. Would you provide now a divine appointment for me to speak to them the truth of your love and your care for them and your desire to meet with them? And so as I'm, I turned, I almost instinctively led by the Holy Spirit. This is the power available to us Jesus alive in me at that moment and um, straight to this man and I went up to him and said how can I pray for you if God is real what miracle could he do for you how can I pray for you right now and he told me the tragedy of what's happened to him in the past few months he's lost his job he doesn't know where money's going to come from he's he sat there looking all dejected his mum had had a stroke um, and was now in, in a terrible place he he looked like life had beaten him up and that there was no hope. He was living in despair. And I was able to tell him the good news of the gospel, that Jesus went to the cross to be able to provide for him these things and to be able to provide for him the blessings of, of this life. And more than that, that the hope goes beyond this life, that actually one day all these things will disappear and we will see the hope and we will see the glory of God in heaven and we can live forever worshipping him because Jesus went to the cross because he loves him and because Jesus loves him he invites this man into a relationship with him and when I did that you could see something welling up inside of him that actually there was hope beyond these present circumstances and I led him in a prayer of salvation and and we were able to declare over his situation that Jesus is Lord that Jesus is King, that Jesus is help, and he is now alive in him as he is alive in me. This is the power of Jesus in our lives. And um, I may have stepped out in faith, but it was Jesus who met him. And actually, Jesus moved into his heart, and everyone who I led to Jesus this week said, wow, I, I feel so much better. I, I, I feel something. And I said, you know, that's the joy of the Lord that has moved in. We see that even in here in verse 28, where Peter is, is uh, quoting Psalm 16, that in his presence there is fullness of joy. He is speaking about Jesus, um, that this is a messianic prophecy of David's, but also that applies to us because we have Jesus in us, and in his presence there is fullness of joy. When these guys came to Jesus, there was joy that had moved in, regardless of their circumstances, and for many of them the circumstances hadn't changed. But Jesus had changed them and they could see that when he changed them that he was worth living for and the circumstances circumstances mattered mattered much less that's an example of what happens when we follow the Holy Spirit when we ask him to move into our every situation that he might be our help and you know there have been plenty of times where I've got it wrong in my life even this week where I've got it wrong I, miss, I, I, I didn't do what the Holy Spirit asked me to. And for those times we ask for forgiveness and we repent. But when we do, there is assurance that he will lead us closer to him. That we will know him. And there is joy as we do so. Do we believe this power is available for us? That Jesus is alive in us? And just as I finish, I just want to remind us of a story that we read of in Matthew 17, in Mark 9 and Luke 9, 
where Jesus has ascended up the mountain of transfiguration and he's transfigured before Peter, James and John. Peter has already declared that he is the Christ, but they're not quite sure what this means. And they see him transfigured before them. And again, they're not quite sure what it means. And then they come back down the mountain and the other disciples are trying to cast out a demon from this little boy. And the, the dad of this boy comes out and says, you, the disciples couldn't cast out this demon. Jesus, please help me. And Jesus says to him, all things are possible for those who believe. And the man says, Lord, I do believe. Help me overcome my unbelief. And he knows that's my prayer on a daily basis. That's my prayer for each one of us. That when we come into each situation for every day, that we say we do believe, help me overcome my unbelief. So when I ask the question of, do we believe in this resurrection power available to us? That's really what I mean. Will we pray the prayer, Lord, I do believe. Help me overcome my unbelief. Help me know you. Help me know your resurrection power. Do something amazing in me so that I will believe. And of course, Jesus heals this little boy. And the disciples ask Jesus, why couldn't we do this? And he says two things. He says, firstly, this spirit can only be cast out because of prayer and fasting. When we place our reliance on Jesus through prayer, through fasting, we can know that he will move. And secondly, Jesus says, if you have faith, even as small as a mustard seed, then you can say to this mountain, be moved into the sea. I don't know what mountains are in front of you, but I know for me, I've had to overcome some mountains this week. I've had to have that small amount of faith. And when I do, when I did, I always saw Jesus move and change people's lives. He's changed my life. And for many of us, he's changed our lives. Will we live in the power of that and acknowledge that Jesus is alive in us and because of that, we can live a life for him. So we're going to come to a time of prayer. We're going to come to a time where we just ask the Lord to help us overcome our unbelief. That we will be empowered and equipped to be the people he wants us to be. That we would lead many people to know him. And that we would serve him with everything that we have. So perhaps if you want some of that resurrection power, you want to know Jesus as the Lord of your life, as, a, as someone who who can live inside of us and equip us to be the people he wants us to be. Let's just humble ourselves now. Maybe you want to change your posture and kneel. Maybe you just want to raise your hands. Maybe you just want to invite Jesus in your mind to move in and to reveal himself. Demonstrate that he is alive by, by empowering us to live the life for him. And I'm going to pray right now. For each one of us, let's pray. Father God, we thank you for raising Jesus from the dead. Thank you that he has set us free from all our sin and all the problems that we've caused in our own lives and those things that have been caused as a result of other people's actions. Thank you, Lord, that you have given your life for us and we choose to give our life for you and the same power that raised you from the dead is now available to us come lord jesus empower us equip us show us how to be your people we wait for you holy spirit come we're just going to wait here in this place holy spirit fill us that we might know your power and that you are alive in us